more and the bugs happening in the operating systems. Around 80% of the bugs in Windows that happen it annually and 80%, close to 80% of them which happen in Linux are a result of bad implementation of drivers are a result of some bugs in the drivers. So we'll be looking into an issue called driver fault tolerance. This is completely new, completely new, simple add-on topic because we need to understand as a driver developer how to build our driver to be fault tolerant. In case our driver has a bug, we need to isolate that bug in such a way that it should not affect the kernel performance. So how do we do that? In case our driver crashes, we should be able to restart our driver or we should be able to pass on the state of that driver to some other standby driver and get the things working. So these kind of issues, the high availability, fault tolerance kind of issues will touch on because this is where lots of operating systems research is happening now. Maybe the next generation of operating systems will have full blown implementation of these types. We just wanted to give an overview of how these things work and how it's possible to implement these kind of things in Linux. Because Linux is open source, we could do all this. So this will be the basic driver discussions. This will be the scope of drivers. Apart from these drivers, you have a set of drivers called embedded drivers. Embedded Linux drivers. Embedded Linux drivers is all about how do you write a driver for a specific target board chipset if those drivers are not already available in a kernel source? What is the approach? There are two approaches here. Sometimes you need to write down the driver all from the scratch. There won't be any implementation. Sometimes there could be an implementation similar to what you want to write targeting some other chipset. You need to port that, tweak that, configure that to your chipset. So we'll be looking into both types here. How do you build from scratch and how do you add the driver to kernel source code? How do you build the kernel along with the driver? This kind of implementation we call as static drivers. These drivers most of the time are dynamic drivers. Dynamic drivers are those that you can insert into operating system at the runtime and without the reboot you can test them. Static drivers are those which are to be part of the kernel image. They should boot along with the kernel. So we're looking to both types here. This type is often used, the static drivers are often used only in the embedded startup, the BSP drivers that refer to us. So towards the end of drivers, we'll look into that part of it. I have a few examples to show for the boards that we are using here. I'll be showing you examples of those. So these will be the topics for the device drivers. Any questions so far? If you have any questions, if you want any clarification of the topics, uh, these will be the topics. And then we'll have a model Linux. Of course, that will deal with kernel configuration, choosing kernel services for a specific embedded target, and how do you get the things done in debugging, all that stuff. I mean, a lot of job openings are there for network. Yes. Networking with regard to Vendor. Uh, related to IP. See, the problem is, uh, the reason why we have stripped it out, these things don't gel well. Because if I spend 70% of the class time dealing with kernel and the workings of kernel and driver and all that, then if I switch over to networking, networking is completely uh, independent of the operating system. To understand networking, to be a good network developer, you need to know, look into RFCs, you need to study protocols. So that's a completely different approach. Oh, the basic like we security. have network drivers here. In, that In this, we have network drivers, internet drivers, how do you write? How do you implement drivers for various kinds of uh, Wi-Fi kind of network devices? Those implementations are there, but not with the protocol. Earlier, that was part of the course. Now, we have removed it because I'm unable to justify that. I'm not spending much time on it. So I thought instead of uh, spending less time, let's take it out and strip out and make it available as a separate course. What about this open source? It is part of practice or you will be teaching us something more? There's nothing like a practice here. There's nothing like a module here. Linux kernel is open source. When you're writing drivers, you can choose your code to be openly available to everyone with source code. Or you can choose your driver to be proprietary. So open source is all about how do you want to release your code. You want to release your source to the client, or do you want to keep the source and release only binaries? That's a practice. That's simply a policy of the vendor. 
Yeah, okay. Linux kernel is open source. The tools which we are using are open source tools. So the program, the way we write our code, the way we use our syntax, it will be all open standards, GNU open standards. File systems? We will card file systems at the functionality level, but not at the implementation level. Uh, like in the embedded discussions, we card about the file systems of Flash. The Flash file system, the NAND Flash file systems, how they work and how do we need to use them and all of that. In the driver discussions, we'll spend on the file systems like ext2, ext3, the disk file systems. As part of kernel programming, we'll get to know about something called logical file systems. So file systems at the functionality level, what they do, what kind of data structures they manage, what is their functionality, that we'll study. But not going to much of implementation of file system. Because I feel that's completely a different area again, completely a micro subject. You need to completely go into file system, study your disk. So a lot of issues are there. And usually if jobs in that area are not much. This happens to be a general course. I wanted to give more overview of all the subsystems. So that's the reason the implementation is not discussed here. But in case you're interested, I can give you a few examples or a few case studies using which you can get through all that. But the basic functionality of how it works, we'll discuss all that. The coding of, uh, in the R mining only covered in this course, otherwise any of the that little bit progress. Uh, like in we have R9 and uh, legal code, I saw that. So we'll be covering our practical of those. But while delivering the lecture, while delivering the embedded sessions, our objective is to take all the issues and generic level, irrespective of which hardware you're dealing with, and then start with how do you study your hardware, how do you configure kernel, what issues you need to take care of. Uh, as much as possible, I'll try to be general so that you can apply this to any board. But there will be some specific issues when writing drivers. Like the drivers that we write for the ARM 9 may not be same for the OMAP. So those general issues will be there, the specific issues. But those issues are highlight. But rest of general issues, like what issues you should take care of while porting, what tools you need to use, how to configure them, and all that. Those are general. You can apply to any port. Uh, the whole of the session, sir. There will be one support faculty along with me, support faculty. Most of the content, 90% of it, I put everybody. Uh, we had this embedded being delivered by other trainers earlier. From uh, this particular session onwards, uh, I am taking up the embedded also. So we are taking almost 95% of the course content. And then uh, there are a few topics like build tools and all that, which are offloaded to other trainers. Other trainers will be introduced to you in a couple of days. And they will be dealing with small topics like build tools, or GDB kind of tools and all that. Any specific questions on uh, uh, the orientation part, essentials part, you think anything is missing out? If you want to include anything, that is possible. You can customize it now. If anyone wants to have any, anything to talk about the essentials, commands and all that, those of you who are new to Unix and Linux, commands and not be spending time in the classroom. Uh, what we are doing is, earlier we had the offline lab sessions. But from this batch on, you'll have two modes of training. One is the online mode, the other one is a live mode. So you'll receive a few online sessions in your mailbox every week, one or two. These online sessions will help you with extra topics, which are not discussed in the live sessions. These online sessions directly, if they'll be sent, they'll be sent to you, you can watch them. So in those sessions, the commands, whatever, whatever basic issues are to be discussed, we'll deliver all them through these online sessions. So it will be a combination of an online plus life. That's how this whole day will be. Any further questions? You will be enrolled uh, with the autos? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, discussions about how to turn Linux into a real-time kernel and how to build applications, those discussions are there. But not out and out Atos. Uh, like I'll not be using VxWorks and I'll not be using all these Atos straight instead. How do we engineer an operating system for real-time behavior? That's where the discussion goes. Because recently Linux had lots of patches to turn that into anti. We'll discuss about those patches. So most of our discussion is centered around Linux. And how do you make Linux work for embedded? How do you make it work for real-time? How do you make it work for application development? All that. Building kernel in Yes, 
बिल्डिंग